Time to chop it up with John Wilner, Wilner Hotline. Always good to catch up with John because he knows what's going on inside and out, especially on this TV deal. He has it all figured out. He has it pegged like everybody else does because they're all running around saying, oh, we got this deal done. Right, John? You know, I don't know what's going to happen. I still think the best, uh, the best, uh, most likely outcome is that they're going to sign, the 10 presidents are going to sign a grant of rights, uh, agree to a media deal, and then move forward together possibly with expansion, possibly not. But, you know, until they sign on the bottom, lo bottom line, you, you just don't know because realignment, screwy things can happen in realignment. Uh, a lot of unknown factors can kind of reach up and, and kind of gobble your best laid plans. So we will see. But I think, you know, and we've talked about this, July 21st is Pac-12 Football Media Day in Las Vegas, a huge event for the conference Uh in, in front of the most anticipated season the Pac-12 has had in a long time, there is no way they want the media rights thing to swallow all the oxygen. They want the focus there on their quarterbacks, their teams, the, the other players. So they're going to get it done before July 21st, I would imagine. Okay, and I was being facetious off the top there because sure. he's running around saying they haven't figured out. But there was some news, I think, towards the end of last week where, well, a couple things. President Robbins is now starting to be a little bit more out there where I'm not having to hear from Michael Crow. You have the president of Washington State saying the Pac-12 next TV deal will be done by the end of the month. You have John Canzano, who you do this, your podcast with, reporting the Pac-12 will get more money than the Big 12. Okay, so let's just go through each one of those from your view. Sure. Are you hearing that the, the media deal is going to be done by the end of the month as President Schultz suggested? I don't know that it's going to be done by the end of the month. Uh, there's reason to do it then, because if you get past June 30th, then San Diego State would have to, it, their exit fee from the Mountain West to join the Pac-12 would double. Uh, but I don't know that that will be the case. I think he... He was then later asked, and this was uh, during a presentation to the uh, Board of Regents up in Washington State. Uh, he was then asked, how confident are you? And he's like seven out of 10. Hmm. So I, I kind of feel like the same thing. It's going to either be the last two weeks of Ju June or the probably the first 10 days of July is, is like the target window, I think. Okay. The Pac-12 will get more money than the Big 12. Could be. Uh, I have always thought they're very similar. And, you know, within 10% high or low, Big 12 signed a deal that's going to pay each school $31.7 I think the Pac-12 is going to come in between 29 and $34 million per school. And either way, the difference doesn't matter. It's not, you know, a million or two here or there doesn't affect whether your football team is is good or bad, right? So, because these, but you know, these schools have budgets of a hundred million dollars. So we're talking about small percentages. It'll be somewhere in line. I think it, there's certainly a chance it will be more uh, when you know when you total everything. Uh, we don't know what the linear versus sc streaming component is going to be in terms of the dollars and the number of games. It's going to be right in that low, high, very high twenties to to low thirties, maybe mid thirties for the Pac-12 if they get fortunate. I guess I would look at that and say that would be a very good number given that USC and UCLA are leaving. So what you're suggesting, even with USC and UCLA leaving, they're not going to have the bottom fall out of them from, from what it appears to be what you hear, uh, what is out there, right? Yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, I've never thought that. There have been these dire reports in the media, on social media, that, the, that they were going to not get an offer that it was going to be like $20 million per school, something terrible that was going to cause the Arizona schools to leave for the Big 12. I have no indication to suggest that it's going to be anything other than somewhere in that 10% plus or minus range of, of the Big 12. It's not going to be 20, 22 million. It'll be high 20s, low 30s, maybe mid 30s. The, but, and those reports have always been very, us, uh, you know, sketchy, sure, highly, highly dubious. Yeah. President Robbins being more vocal, being out there, 
What do you make out of that, John? You were in Tucson for years. What, what do you make out of that? Yeah, it's interesting. He's now had two rounds of very public uh, discussions. One was in kind of mid to late March. He did a series of interviews around the NCAA tournament. And then the, the comments last week were part of the University of Arizona's summit on college sports in Washington, D.C. that he attended. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I think he's expecting that they're going to stay together. Uh, he's, you know, he seems to like to talk uh, to, the, to the press about sports, which is very unusual for university presidents. He's a sports fan, mm -hmm. right? He follows it pretty hard. I would say I would certainly put him if you're ranking the Pac-12 presidents on who knows the most about college sports. He is certainly on the top tier. Right. Uh, at the same time, university presidents don't talk about sports in the same vernacular that coaches and athletic directors and fans and reporters do. Uh, you know, and in his case, the guy is running a multi-billion dollar business and he's a surgeon. And he's also trying to talk about sports. So you almost have to try to translate the presidential language into the sports fans language and figure out what they're trying to say. And I think what he's trying to say is he's confident the Pac-12 is going to going to stick together and get a good deal. And, the, you know, there's a real question out there as to what the presidents know about the bids on this media deal. What has Commissioner George Kliakoff shared with them? And I think he has shared enough for them to be confident that the, the final proposal, the, uh, the written proposal, will be worth signing. If Kliakoff was not in that position, don't you think by now the presidents would have said, we've made the wrong move, we got to get somebody in here and panic out and jettison him already if if they felt like we made a bad hire because you and i have talked about this like his job is clearly on the line he can't come in there and say ta-da we got 27 million dollars no you wouldn't think uh, i well what i think would have happened is if we had gotten this far 11 months in and he was saying i'm still working on this please you know please be patient i i think so and so may bid on us here blah 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 they'd be gone the Arizona schools, Colorado and Utah would be in the Big 12 already because they know what they're getting. They'd get $31.7 million in the, from the Big 12. They'd have a deal that was, you know, on ESPN and Fox with a mix of streaming and linear. They know their option, and yet they're still in the Pac-12. That tells me Klierkoff has given them enough information to make them feel confident that the, the final proposal will be worth signing. John Wilner with us for a couple of minutes before I get you out of here. Uh, give me a thought on sports betting. We briefly touched on it a few weeks back. And John, I, I look at what's going on in the NFL and colleges, and it's this tidal wave that many of us that have been in the sports world knew was going to happen. Like there's no way that some daddy baller isn't going to give his kid the password to his phone to an app and he can show his buddies how to put 15 bucks down. I mean, that's this is all the, the offshoot of it. What are you hearing around the college athletic scene and sports betting and gambling and what can be done? Because it's still early. Still early. Well, one thing I'm hearing is there's a lot of concern that there's going to be gambling scandals. Uh, the other thing is that the, the conferences and I know the Pac-12 for sure are trying to get out ahead of it. They're partnering with these uh, companies that monitor uh, police uh, gaming, mobile gaming especially, you know, and the technology for policing is very good, right? I've always thought, you know, with the, when it comes to PDs in baseball, for instance, the cheaters were always ahead of the police. But with gambling... I feel like right now the police are moving in lockstep with with the folks who are trying to gamble in terms of being able to track who's wagering, how much they're wagering, where they're wagering from, what device they're wagering using to wager. Technology is is pretty is is moving in lockstep with the the uh, the you know the gamblers, mm -hmm. and so that gives college sports a better chance, I think, to avoid a. a a barrage of scandals. You know, we saw Alabama's baseball coach. We saw players at Iowa and Iowa State are being investigated. It's going to happen everywhere. But those, though, the fact that those happened and that they got caught shows you that the the system is working. 
And as someone who was the color analyst on Arizona State basketball on radio back in the Headache Smith days, and I sat there and watched games and thought, man, they're really bad. And then we all saw what happened with Headache Smith. And I sat there as a media member, as a broadcaster. I was floored, and that was many moons ago. Yep. So this, uh, this is not something new, but it is something that has been ramped up given now the legalization in certain states to go out and, and do games. Oh, yeah. It's, and when it cuts to Cal, when California legalizes it, everything is going incre- to you know, increase exponentially. John Wilner with us. Wilner Hotline. You can read his content every week on Sports360AZ.com. And make sure that you follow him over on his social media, Wilner Hotline. Thanks, John. Thanks very much, Brad. And we're back with more after this timeout.